Dr. Road, the author of e-bike master books, this time, among retro-style electric bicycles, I tried purchasing the most affordable model for a test. The reason for the purchase was that as my kids grew up, they could no longer use toddler saddles. It's become difficult to carry both front and back now that they're over 8 years old. I opted for a mope-style fat bike because its rear seat is quite long, making it suitable for carrying children over 8 years old. It's exciting. Although it has a steel frame, so it's heavy and prone to rust, it has excellent rigidity for dual riders. For dual riders, 48 volts products require a 20 m per hour battery to deliver sufficient power, ensuring the battery doesn't get stressed. Even though it's labeled as a 48 volts 750 watt product, the controller indicates a rated output of a 500 watt product was used. Just like electric bicycles and cars. There's a lot of exaggerated advertising, claiming peak output for a few seconds as a standard, which can be considered somewhat misleading. Anyway, since the battery capacity I chose isn't large, at 12 amp per hour, it can't deliver a 750 watt output from the start. Therefore, to maximize the performance of an electric bicycle, factors like battery amper hour capacity are crucial. A 48 volts battery pack of around 20 amp per hour is appropriate. Assembling the moped electric bicycle is easy. You only need a hex wrench. If assembling the bicycle yourself, brake adjustments are necessary to ensure the pads don't touch the rotor. Opting for hydraulic brakes with excellent braking power and long maintenance intervals can save costs in the future. I really want to discourage mechanical disc brakes. Most mechanical disc brakes use a single action type where only one pad moves, taking a long time for alignment. Oh, surprisingly, the recent keyless entry system has been applied. Turning on the monitor power button and bringing the NFC key close to the monitor ignites the system. Circular abs plastic headlights are used, along with electronic horns, supporting both taillights and brake lights. And turn signals can also be used like those on motorcycles. Both the front fork and rear suspension use coil spring types. Next time, I plan to upgrade to a high-end suspension with rebound damping functionality. Most standard suspensions installed on electric bicycles tend to bounce too much upon strong impacts. While it may cost up to 150 to 200 US dollars, investing in suspension is worthwhile. Accessories include a bag and aluminum pedals. Wow, it even comes with a cool windshield. It also provides a charger that's faster than the typical 2 a m per output at 3 a m per. Checking the charger voltage is indeed a crucial inspection point. The fully charged voltage for a 48 volts battery pack is 54.6 volts. When tested with a multi-tester, it's within the normal range, not exceeding 0.5 volts. Considering the price, it can be said that the performance is excellent. Actually, riding it, you won't break a sweat, making it very comfortable to drive leisurely. The seat is really soft, and the position is comfortable. I customized it and tried carrying kids front and back. There's plenty of space, making it excellent. If you're carrying kids around, adding a backrest later would be a good idea. Mope style bikes don't have great human-powered pedaling efficiency. The reason is that the seat is wide from side to side, causing discomfort on the thighs, and it's not adjustable in height. But you don't necessarily need to use an electric bike for exercise. Such electric bikes are great for leisurely riding and just enjoying the ride comfortably. Well then, have a pleasant riding time today. This was Dr. Road, the author of Electric Bike Master Books. Thank you for watching.